Hi, this is uh, Mary Beryakoff again, and this is part two um, of this uh, short video. Um, right now it sounds like more like a one-person debate so far, uh, but it has to start uh, someplace, somehow. We, we have to get uh, a better understanding uh, about multiple sclerosis, uh, these two theories, uh, how they relate. Uh, we need to stop the discrimination against uh, MS patients. We have to get Canada out of the rut. Uh, we should have a first-class health system. We're renowned for that. We should be the leaders, uh, not the followers uh, in, in this process. So we're going to continue with the uh, compare and contrast uh, strategy because that, that's a great way of, of continuing the debate uh, to show different points of view uh, side by side. So we're going to start talking first about uh, CCSVI and uh, the MS Society. And I need to preface this first by saying that uh, this is my opinion, but it's definitely shared by a lot of MS patients that I talk with, as well as the general public, when say they have a better explanation of what is happening. The MS Society, uh, I feel, is the most hypocritical player in, in this whole scenario. Um, they say one thing, but they mean something totally different. It's disappointing to know that 50% of fundraising uh, goes into administration pockets. This is the highest uh, amount in, in uh, charities in Canada. Uh, they have a vested interest and uh, a status quo to uh, maintain the status quo, uh, which is the autoimmune theory, uh, the neurologist for scientific advisors, the animal studies to, to come up with more drugs, and of course the, the pharma companies to, to make these drugs for them. So on the other hand, they also have a uh, medical advisory panel that uh, grants uh, research funds um, a lot of times in-house. Um, they advise the government, uh, which is uh, somewhat scary because these people are appointed, uh, they're not elected. And one example is Mr. Savoie, who is uh, a non-medical personnel, but he's the CEO of Canada's uh, MS Society. He recently stated that he wants to be sure science is good, that uh, that is what MS people are owed. But my whole question, and I'll be reading a letter to him uh, a bit later, you know, who is he to determine any kind of, of medical science or research? He's a, he's a lobbyist at best. Uh, CTSVI CTS, and media uh, it's, it's great to see that local newspapers uh, cover personal stories of people going on liberation journeys and returning back with uh, improved results. Social media is alive and well. Uh, we, we share stories, reports, uh, research, uh, laugh, cry, rally, great place to, to meet people. And we're acting as our own personal advocates, although in, in my opinion it would be great if doctors uh, could help change medical history and we can kind of plug into what doctors are saying rather than the other way around. If you take a look at uh, the, the media that may be against CCSVI, uh, they use the word controversial a lot and, and that is fine uh, because it is a new theory and they need to be impartial in their reporting, that's part of their ethics. Um, they do you know, state that proper research and trials are required but as you saw in, in um, part two, uh, a lot of our research trials are blocked by a, a lot of these uh, people and, and um, institutions like the MS Society. Uh, uh, I think a good question here is how to avoid uh, bias uh, or possible inaccuracies in, in some of the reporting. And a prime example here is the Pudet uh, report. Uh, Dr. Pudet is a neurologist who is also the head of the Canadian Institute of Health Research, who recently vetoed, his committee vetoed, uh, any uh, clinical funding or trials. Um, but besides reading his report, there's also a, a nine-page analysis of scientific and ethical breaches in that report. And we don't often see the other side of, of what is said in newspapers. Person testimonials. Uh, you know, by far the most exciting and heartwarming part of this whole process, uh, mo uh, mainly self-assessment at this point because this is all that we have. Uh, clinical and anecdotal evidence are, are, are growing and, and uh, overwhelming. Uh, definitely outrank uh, any drug results that, that uh, MS patients get. 
It would be nice, however, to have some you know, post-treatment follow-up, um, some advice, you know, some exercises and, and coordination and so forth would be helpful for uh, liberated patients. The um, um, opposite to CCSVI, or basically saying that you know drugs matter. In fact, you know drug side effects are, are better than than the effects of the disease itself uh, versus blood flow that matters. Uh, they call this the placebo effect, and, and because they say there's no no scientific background, and in some cases that is correct. But then you know they they're not allowing uh, any trials and no no proper treatment trials in, in our country, so how can we possibly find evidence and testimonials? We have a right to a second doctor's opinion. Um, if a neurologist says that they cannot give us any help, we should be able to go to a cardiovascular specialist and, and ask for, for a, a Dauber scan, see whether or not there is constriction, and then follow, that, follow it with a, a simple venioplasty. You cannot deny treatment in our country according to the Medical Act. So this is where I'd like to just briefly uh, read a short letter to uh, uh, Mr. Savoy because he holds in his hands, you know, one of the most uh, exciting medical breakthroughs in MS history, uh, but he's fumbling badly and history will be his judge. So Mr. Savoy, uh, first in my opinion, uh, your hypocrisy is overwhelming. You have not answered any questions about your timeline. You have walked away from debates with MS patients. You only accept scripted questions and answers now. In a recent uh, CTV interview, you said how tremendously excited you were about new options and how you first, first solicited research proposals, but then you said it was unproven and research grants were approved to image blockages of veins as some kind of building blocks with the implication of opening veins with definitive answers if they pointed in the right direction in your opinion, uh, possibly in two years or so, and again data convened by more experts, uh, I would assume more neurologists. You then pointed out with a straight face that you honor and you celebrate choices that MS patients make for their health such as going abroad for a simple treatment. But your jurisdictional hand has stopped treatments in the name of more picture studies by your medical advisors. You should be jumping for joy and leading the march towards simple, effective treatment for those patients who are interested, rather than justifying years of roadblocks in the name of science. Stop this hypocrisy. Stop and look at the comprehensive international scientific studies around you. You have no expertise to step into the shoes of some of the world's foremost scientists and doctors and relegate Canadian medicine to less than third world status. Stop and talk to liberated people who can walk better and dream of a better life, unburdened by your approved drug therapies, side effects and costs. Stop terrible deaths by MS asphyxiation, such as this one young father who died waiting for an angioplasty. And most of all, stop playing doctor, as if you hold the trump card. You have no right to judge medical decisions. You are a highly paid lobbyist. Enough. So the big picture here, in summary, is that you know uh, life is not a game of cards. Uh, health is not about politics or semantics. Uh, it's about our faith in healing and doctors who care without the almighty dollar and medical progress that helps give us hope for our families again. Uh, it's about returning our rights to, to health freedom in our own country. So again, this has been a call for serious debate uh, on these various issues and perhaps dispel some of the uh, conspiracy currents that are, that are out there. Uh, it's time to unburden taxpayers, time to unburden the medical uh, health care plan that we have. So I thank you again uh, for your time, uh, your interest. Um, I do welcome comments and questions. Uh, if you need more re resources about any of the points or references made in parts one or two, uh, certainly you can get help at telus.net. Uh, you can also watch my brothers get liberated on youtube.com. I just put in the word.